Mm-mm-mm. Hello, YouTube. Mm. Oh, a good sandwich. I just had a subway. So I'm in uh, Signal Hill, California. It was a very iconic city. They still have the petroleum pumps. And they're still actually pumping right now as we speak. Today is uh, March today's the 7th. Yeah, I think today is the 7th, 2022. And prices are going up. I was just in the subway and some dude was like... Um, in... In... in over near Beverly, not Beverly Hills, but uh, was it Hollywood? North Hollywood or something? It's like some station was selling it for like 10 bucks a gallon. And he was selling it to the customer and he, he got, he couldn't believe it. Um, uh, that is super extreme. 10 bucks per gallon? No way. And that's the silliest thing. But here's what my teacher, here's what a teacher told me in, um, in a community college. He's like, well, the, the thing is that CARB, California Air Resource Board, has the ability, literally, they they gave, the, the California gave the authority to that organization to increase, to reduce emissions and full authority, like whatever they want to do, they can, they can increase, um, they can increase the price to like $50 a gallon just so the emissions so they can control emissions and reduce emissions so people won't buy it or something it's some it's extreme but uh right now that's what he said i can probably you guys can probably look it up but that is that is wild i don't energy independence and energy security and sustainability it's all like i don't know i mean i think it's very it, like every a lot of people know it's possible not just me a lot of people are sick and tired. I think this is like the final push. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been in the pursuit of this uh, thing since I think I started tr truck driving in 2012. I think like around October, and then 12, 13, 14, and then finally 15. I started, I started just looking at the numbers. I didn't really get involved with my brother and in, in, in the business and him or uh, me take control of. Uh, like the thing he just paid me my 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 uh my 1099 and it and i just i did some things here and there for the truck and uh luckily you know it's knock on knock on my head i haven't had too many crazy um incidents or accidents i've had some bumpers some bumper f uh fender bent not fender bender but yeah actually a fender bender on the freeway but i mean no one was luckily no one was injured or um the damage wasn't uh, too much, I think. And then I hit the... I scratched up the side of a trailer. But this was when I was f coming from, I think... This was from, like, Las Lunas, like, south of Albuquerque. Um, driving all day up there from Nogales up to Las Lunas. It was, like, seven, eight hours. I would... Just totally not cool. Like, well, everybody goes through these, like, these uh, phase Or these, like, these non-stop hustles and bustles. But... This was definitely not cool. Um, uh, what, in retrospect, you know, like looking back at it, oh, like what? I, I was driving. I was working hard, uh, driving up to from Nogales, Arizona. I think tomatoes or something uh, from uh, right there, like the border of Nogales and um, uh, what's it called? Nogales and Arizona and Mexico, right there, is so the importing a lot of vegetables and stuff. But so I started. I did that. Um, and then I would rush up to Nogales and deliver at Walmart, or not Nogales to Las Lunas, and then deliver in Walmart. Like at like at midnight, they'll let us in, and then uh, I think by three or four, or they would be done around five or six, but I'd be sleeping, and they'd wake you up and and call you. Or I, I'm pretty sure things change now, but uh, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, what am I talking about that for? I don't know. Anyway, but there's a driver. Beep, beep, boop. <laughs> All right. Um, he, uh, yeah, but that, so yeah, 2015, I was thinking about this and 
uh, I just kept wondering and like, whoa. And then I, I stumbled across like a few YouTube videos like, oh, it's uh, biofuel, biodiesel. And then uh, I took an emissions class in, in, in community college before I got my license. I think I started in 2010 and graduated with my electrical certificate in 2012 um, at Riverside Community College. And, and it was um, for electrical cert. So I studied, I studied like a two years like like ac and electrical diagnosing and and general brakes and stuff like that um uh charging systems of the vehicle and, and it was cool but uh i've uh, i took an emissions that was interesting it was, it was diesel and stuff and and I, you know I, I learned a little bit about biodiesel and biofuels and how it's a better uh it's the lubricity um from five to ten percent is better for the engine for diesel engines um because the ultra low slur for diesel was was really running in running engines into the ground uh and it's um it was like putting so many trucking companies underneath and and uh a lot of people didn't survive so uh this b20s mandate uh or this biofuel mine that started increasing and, and going up and and for the future i believe it's gonna continue to go up too um it's gonna go from it's like a given like it's 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 a no-brainer like it, it went from b5 and then manufacturers weren't weren't um engine manufacturers weren't warrantying it or or, or covering under warranty or whatever but it's totally cool because it, it supports like 20 it's it's the original thing the original engine is supposed to run off on peanut oil that's what Rudolph Diesel made it to to run on peanut oil, and I mean, uh, so any vegetable oil you you think or any type of renewable fuel or something like that is going to be it's going to be um, sufficient and, and it can work, it will work. Um, so I started studying from fifteen to sixteen, seventeen. I went around um, different uh, this you know. Oh, it's kind of chilly. I want to go inside. But um, let's finish up this thought. I was, uh, yeah, from 15, uh, 16, 17, I would here and there and, and around the uh, United States, I would find places like, uh, I think I went to several. I went to, um, I really liked, I need to go. I, I like going because it's like you learn a lot. Um, and I learned, I went to, I'm not sure what order it was, but I went to like the NOCO Hemp Expo in 17 and 18 I think I got a booth in 19. I think I went to like the Arcs, Arxa, um, Arxa, uh, Rain Catchment, um, uh, Rain Catchment Association or something. And that was really neat. That was in, I want to say, like, I want to say 2018. Um, that was in Georgia, I think in Georgia. And I, uh, um, Atlanta. And I took some time off, and I went down, and and I met some um, interesting folks and, and nice people, and and I learned about uh, range catchment. And some it's it's uh, against the law, actually illegal sometimes in some cities and some states. I think somewhere in Denver, like that, the they're like, no, you can't catch rainwater. Like what? All right, but I'm not. I thought that was a little bit strange, but anyway, those are the rules. Um, and what else did I go to? Oh, the National Biodiesel Expo. That was really interesting. Um, it wasn't that busy. I think I went like January, February 2019. The beginning of 2019, I think. Um, yeah, I was down there in San Diego. And, and it was it was, pretty, it was a pretty penny. Uh, I didn't get no booth or anything, but I got a... All right, I'm done. I'm going inside the camp. <laughs> Yeah, I went to the expo and, um, well, it's already nine minutes. That's enough. And I just want to talk about that. I hope you in the R Russian Ukraine thing. It's, it's, um, it's ridiculous. You give me 45, 50 acres and, and all the tools and at my disposal, I'll, I'll grow you 
I'd grow some uh, biofuels. It doesn't even have to be hemp. It can be anything else, but it's quite, hemp is just the, the fastest turnaround. I think you can get two, two, um, two harvests in a, in a year, depending on your location. I don't think, and maybe in Colorado, yeah, you probably can pull it off, but um, definitely in Southern California, um, industrial hemp loves sunlight. So where's the sunniest place in the, in the United States? I think it's Death Valley or it's all the desert down here in Arizona too. It's the sunniest location. Like, um, but that's, that's what that is. Um, and it should be, it should be way like it's, it's like prime time. I think it's like perfect scenario. Um, and that's, I'm talking about it cause I want other people to do it too. Um, I can care less if they take my, like, I know my idea is not, it's, it's so, it's so basic. It's so simple to just pursue it and do it. But I mean, I haven't had much, um, I mean, people look at it like I'm in, like, like I got a screw loose or something, but I, it's just common, like basic. It's like basic. Like, why won't you do it? Like, um, grow your own biofuel and then sell it or, or use it yourself. Um, you know, you're your own customer with your own farm. So, um, well, it's, it's gonna, it's developing more and more. I can, you get, especially with this Ukraine thing and, and Russia, like, God, oh, get, get out of here. And May in America biofuel, get, get off my back. <laughs> tell, tell everybody all those, you know, but that in a street, uh, it's a big monkey on, on America's back. But anywho, thanks for watching. Again, hope you learned something and um, give it a thumbs up if you like. And if you want cheaper biodiesel, bing. All right, thanks. Oh, and some bonus info. Hello. I want to talk about this. Cute. It's called a Surikawa. Probably getting that wrong. But it's a it's a Surikawa Japanese. Um it's the thing that um they're just circles. Oh hello Mr. Abion. Um yeah they're the original ones are circles, they're like it's kind of like a rebel thing from um from Subway, I guess youngsters would steal them from um from the railway and then i don't know put them in their house or something or in their car uh it's to help you stand up when you don't fall over uh, there's probably a rail railway holder to so you keep your balance but um yeah i got them it's kind of i'm wondering what people think i wonder what people what people think about it oh. but I don't I don't care <laughs> I already have like a hunch of what people think or where I have it but it's not what you think because I have a a broken heart broke I don't know if a broken heart boys or something no uh, it's um I think it kind of matches and it's for it's kind of like a warning for, that's where the horn is and if someone cuts me off like super bad and they make me pull that you know you're literally just you're breaking my heart you're breaking my heart I don't have to pull that um yeah it's um you can't you can't cut people off you can't cut especially big rigs please stop cutting us off Please, grandma and grandpa, and uh, everybody in between. Um, yeah, they uh, cut me off, and then also it's kind of like a a little religion, a little religious, because um, you know how people have crosses right here. Um, I don't. I know people do, and it's. I kind of don't like that. Like you, why would? ask for ear it's it's you and the machine like divine intervention or something that's gonna 
happen is going to happen. Like, and you, you're asking for, you know, to be, to be looked after. It's, it's a little bit, not a little bit, but it's just, I wouldn't, you shouldn't be asking for that. <laughs> uh, but this is kind of a little religious thing too. It's a, uh, what is it? It's, um, uh, I want to say, I want to say some proverb or something, but, um, the Lord is close to those that are broken hearted or something. So a little religious aspect to it. What's the yard hustler? Hello, sir. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, people probably think that I'm upset or angry with, you know, the company or the employer and like, because that's what people do. People get upset and angry. I have no idea why. I have no idea why people get upset. If you don't like your job, just leave. If you do not like your current position, you shouldn't pout or complain or whine about it. No complaining when it's raining. I think I got that from Mac Miller. Um, yeah, so you leave. You don't stick around. And you don't make videos or say bad things. You know, negative things about someone or, or anybody. You talk bad about anybody or somebody, it's funny. Like, you're wasting your energy. You know. Um, I, uh, uh, anybody that means that has success, you, you know, you gotta jump on the team and be like, hey, that, you give them, give them recognition, recognize, you know, uh, anything, anything else is just being a, uh, being a, what's it called? A hater. Like you have some hating in your blood. No way. No way. Unless they do something crazy, bad, like really sketchy or shady, but still don't say nothing. Just leave, <laughs> leave your, leave the, leave the organization. Um, but yep. Uh, thanks. And have a nice day.